Hello everyone, I have some pretty amazing footage here for you, some of the best we've seen from the war. This video clip, which is originally nearly 10 minutes long, shows a Ukrainian Bradley infantry fighting vehicle dueling a Russian T-90M at very close range, with a second Bradley coming along and finishing it off, so the Bradleys win this duel, as we'll see at the end. The first Bradley is heading from left to right, and we see it ambush for T-90M, landing some early hits with its Bushmaster cannon before falling back to another position. The T-90M, you can see, tries to engage the Bradley at close range, luckily hitting a house instead with a miss. That is the early big blast that you can see. That big blast isn't the T-90M detonating, it's around from the T-90M, missing and hitting a house. After that first initial engagement, you can see the T-90M is seen pulling back as well, or at least trying to. So the Bradley and the T-90M are both pulling back to different positions, but both are still engaging each other. And then, as the distance increases, if you look to the top of the screen, you can see incoming fire as another duel is going on somewhere else. That looks like another Bradley, which is engaging Russian positions too. This is too far away to see what it's engaging, but the gunfire definitely looks like a Bradley engaging Russian positions in the trees, and we see multiple blasts, as presumably targets are hit. I'm not sure if these are vehicles being hit here, Russian firing positions or ammo detonations or what, but definitely something is being engaged there by another Bradley. Now, as for the Bradley and the T-90M in this little duel, there is a bit of a lull going on. Both vehicles are trying to manoeuvre and find a better position either to fire or hide from sight. Then, we see a massive blast. Now, I've no idea what this is. This isn't the T-90M detonating, as it emerges later on, and it's alive and well, but wounded. I wonder if this may be an ammo storage going up after taking some rounds from a Bradley, or maybe some sort of thermobaric round used by Ukraine, which impacted near the T-90M. I think ammo storage is most likely. Now, either this big blast or the early incoming fire from the first Bradley definitely looks to have damaged the T-90M, disabling its sensors or its cannon, for reasons that will become clear soon. Now, at the same time as that blast, you can see a second Bradley is arriving near the bottom of the screen towards the right. So the first Bradley pulled back and this one arrived. Now, I wonder if the first Bradley actually took some damage, so had to pull back or maybe was just out of ammo. Either way, that one gets out of here, and the second Bradley gets tagged in to make its way to a very close firing position against the T-90M. We then see this one as well engage the T-90M with its Bushmaster cannon, firing many, many rounds at it. Now, this is why I think that big blast, or the early engagement at the start with the first Bradley, damaged the T-90M. The second Bradley, is engaging it at very close range, around 40 meters or so, and out in the open. You can see there's no return fire coming towards it from the Russian T-90M. So this T-90M has to be badly damaged and is unable to engage with a Bradley now. But the T-90M is still moving. You can see it trying to slink away in the corner with a cloud of smoke coming from it. So it's damaged but is still mobile. At the moment, this could easily return to Russian lines so it's not disabled. And again, you can see it's making no attempt at all to fight back against the new Bradley. It's in survival mode now, trying to get in a place out of a Bradley's view. The Bradley, you can see, scores multiple more clean hits on the T-90M, causing a number of blasts. So, this T-90M is getting absolutely malleted here, but credit to it, it's still mobile and still moving. These are pretty tough vehicles, it takes a lot of impacts. The Bradley, if you watch, doesn't stop moving. It shifts continuously back and forth, both just in case the T-90M can still engage it to provide a more difficult target, and also, presumably, because the operators worry about incoming artillery fire engaging the Bradley. If it's a static target, it could easily be hit by Russian artillery. So it's good move to see it. Then we see another bit of a lull in the video. There's a bit of incoming fire from the Bradley towards the T-90M, but again, no incoming fire from the T-90M towards the Bradley. 
His seams here for Bradley is pulled back a bit away from the T90M. Seems like the operators are maybe assessing the situation. Then we see another curious big blast. First a fire blazers burning bright and then a very big detonation as something goes up. Now at first I thought, okay, that's the T90M definitely finished. But no, you can see the T90M is still moving and still trying to get to safety. I don't know what that big blast was. I can only assume it may be some sort of ammo stash going up very close to the T90M. Or possibly it's explosive reactive armour. But would they really detonate this big like that? I'm not sure. But I'm really surprised to see the T90M still moving after dozens of hit by, by the Bradley and at least two massive blasts nearby. Which, again, I'm not sure what they are. I can only assume it was an ammo storage. Now here, there is over a minute of not much happening really what I can talk about. We see the T90M manoeuvring around a bit and the Bradley firing at it, scoring some nice, good clean hits. There isn't too much else to discuss in the play-by-play -play here. I mean, there's only so many times I can say the T90M is trying to hide and the Bradley is engaging it. But I don't want to cut or speed up the video. I think it works better as it is, showing the entire engagement at normal speed. So, instead I'm going to talk about the Bradley's main weapon for a minute or so. The M242 Bushmaster Cannon. It's a 25mm single barrel auto cannon. The standard rate of fire is 200 rounds per minute and it has an effective range of 2000 meters. So this puts down a lot of firepower, as we can see in this video. It's firing many many rounds at this T90M. This is pretty much considered to be one of the world's most successful auto cannons. These are fitted on a number of different vehicles. Not just land-based armoured fighting vehicles and APCs like the Bradley, but also naval ships. Where it's most famous, of course, for what we see here, its use with the Bradley. The Bushmaster cannon of the Bradley proved their worth during the Gulf War. I think they bagged more Iraqi vehicles than the Abrams tank did. So these are very good vehicles indeed. Finally, nearing the end of the video now, we get a zoomed-in shot of a T-90M. So you can see it's on fire and it's close to being finished off. Its turret is spinning around aimlessly as it burns. But surprisingly, the T-90M is still mobile. It's still moving, but it's out of control. This time though, finally, the T-90M is finished. The T-90M crashes into a tree and at least now, at last, we can say that it's done for. So, credit to the T-90M. It took a... Big, big hammer in here. And yet, despite the damage it took from two Bradleys and two massive detonations nearby, it was still mobile until the very end. So, we can definitely say the T-90M is certainly much tougher than the typical Russian tank that we see deployed in Ukraine, the T-72 and the T-80s. So let's see where exactly this duel took place. It will come as no surprise to find that this is in step over. We've seen Bradleys operating here a lot. The T-90M was manoeuvring and active in and around the red box. Bradley 1 followed the route shown in blue, engaging targets in the blue box which are marked Engagement Zone. The first Bradley then continued south down the road in order to then pull back towards the west. The second Bradley arrived like so, highlighted in yellow, heading west along that road. It then followed the route the first Bradley came from, engaged with a T-90M in the rough same area of the blue box in the engagement zone. So it was a very interesting little duel. First, credit to the T-90M. That took a lot of damage. And though its guns or sights or similar were knocked out early on, so it couldn't fire back, it did remain mobile up until the point where it hit a tree. So these are definitely a step up from the old T-72 and the T-80, at least in terms of been able to survive. That hasn't stopped high losses of them though. 55 are on Oryx so far, 56 including this one, and spoiler alert for a future video, there are two more to come. Russia had only 60 or so in service at the start of the war, but we do have more in production, but numbers of these certainly aren't high. The second interesting thing, and this shows a big failure in Russian tactics here, this T-90M was operating on its own, with no support from other vehicles such as BMPs and no infantry support. 
It was on its tod, and it lost to the two Gradlets. Maybe if it had some sort of support from other vehicles, things may have been different, who knows. But it seems very foolish to have a T-90M operating smack bang on the front lines like this in contested territory, with no support at all. There could have been other vehicles off screen of course, but they didn't arrive. If so, could be a problem with communications with Russia, as they failed to get another vehicle here to support the T-90M, unlike the Bradley. You can see in the video there was a second Bradley operating nearby which came in to provide backup. So a second vehicle nearby to provide support and Ukraine was able to communicate with it, presumably via the spotter drone and operators, to the second Bradley to come and provide support. Not to mention, we also saw gunfire likely from a third Bradley up at the top of the screen at some point. So three Bradleys at least were operating in this area. Now on deep states, you can see step over is heavily contested. Now this puts Russia's control in the eastern edge of town. But given that video, that doesn't seem to be the case. There was just one solitary T-90M here with zero support. I think it better to put the whole town as the grey zone. Maybe up to as far as the railroad tracks you can see. And it's not like this was a small short skirmish either. Nearly 10 minutes it lasted with no support coming from the poor old T-90M. So I definitely don't think Russia has control of that area east of town. Zoomed out we can see that this is on the um, e mm. Zoomed out we can see that this is on the eastern front in Donetsk. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. Now I'm going to play a video from Sanaf about the ongoing fundraiser. Thanks so much and take care everyone. Okay. Uh, hello Sukumimus community. I'm Sanath. Um, hopefully you've seen the earlier fundraisers that we've done and my relationship with Yuri and my connection to Ukraine. I'm here out in the east. I've been staying with the guys for a number of days. It is cold. The conditions are harsh, but our spirits are high. Um, with your continued support, we'll be able to get this over the line and keep this fight going. Thank you very much.